Hello folks, I'm Jason Crisman of JC's Organic Farming and today I'd like to talk about narrow paddock setup and what that can do for your pastures. On this farm, uh, there was a couple years that there was no livestock on it and then in them few years, the weeds got out of control. We've got goldenrod growing, uh, joe pie, ironweed, um, all kinds of different wild. There's uh, ironweed right there some joe pie uh, this is probably some goldenrod this is the stuff that the cattle will not eat they will completely ignore it especially this purple stemmed uh, ironweed so by placing them in a narrow paddocks which you can see both sides right here there's a tea stake right there and there's the tea stake sticking up over there for that side so we're at the most 40 feet wide and probably 300 foot long. Now what this will do is the cattle will do, they've been in here maybe 15 minutes now. They will continue from one end to the other, grazing back and forth, eating the grass and anything that looks appealing to them. Well, after they reach the end up here, which is not very visible but it's right at the not this stake but the next stake up it cuts across over to the other side what's on the other side of that is this evening's paddocks but anyway you know they'll go from one end down here all the way back and graze and then they'll get down there and they'll turn around and come back and they'll graze and they'll go back and graze and so forth and so on and they'll do this until there's nothing in here for them to eat and this constant back and forth motion, they've trampled on, beat down all of these weeds. Anything they have not eat, they've trampled on. So this is one of the major benefits that I've noticed with narrow paddock setup. Um, a lot of people, I notice what they'll do, is after the cows have been in a pasture, they'll follow behind with the brush hog, and they'll brush hog it. To take down any weeds. Now the main reason for this is because after the cattle have been in an area and there's still weeds standing, now the weeds have access to full sun. This is not good. This gives them a major advantage over the grass. So most farmers will bring in the brush hog and brush hog the fields to set the weeds back. Well, from what I'm hoping to be able to accomplish here by doing the narrow paddock setup is not need the brush hog, not have to put the expense in the diesel, not have to waste my time mowing fields after fields after fields. I'll just simply manage this herd. Now in this herd, there's 33 head. Um, a lot of them are, uh, have just been weaned, more than half of them. <coughs> So what I'll do is later tonight, when I move them again, we'll finish the end of this video with what the paddocks looks like. Okay, so it's approximately eight hours later. I am moving the cattle from where they were this morning, right here in front of us, we can see the dividing point. And we're moving them over into this evening's paddocks. And this is just as thick and dense as what that was down there this morning. And once we get the herd moved over here, we'll take a little walk and uh, see what kind of damage they did do. Come on, boys. Hip, hip. Come on. Come on, boys. You see the barn swallows there, they're, they're nice to have around. They're a great all natural organic fly control agent. Eat thousands and thousands of flies a day. It's funny when I make these pathways for the, the poly wire, 
they circle me on the four-wheeler because I'm kicking up bugs. So there again, we can see the poly wire right over there. It's not very wide paddocks, and it goes to the tree line there. So they'll get this till morning. It looks like we got them all over here. I'm going to walk back. See what kind of damage they did. And it looks like they have really beat down a lot of the weeds. Sure, there's still a few of them left. But out of what there was in here this morning, I would say only 20-25% of them are still standing. Now if you look at this paddocks next to me that we haven't been into yet, you can just see how thick and dense this was this morning. And now we're able to look across the whole thing and easily see my mineral feeder down there that I need to move yet. What they did not eat, they stomped on and pushed down. Now another advantage to what this does is it makes them not be so choosy. If you watch your herd when you move them into a new area, the first thing they'll do is they'll make a quick graze across the area and maybe check out the perimeter. Well, whenever they find something they like, they stay there for a while. And probably until it's gone. Well, when you put them in a small combined area like this and they're grazing back and forth, they don't have quite the choice as being so choosy. So, they're more up to chew on things and eat things they wouldn't normally eat. Now, you can see here next to us, I've got set up for tomorrow. And this will be two paddocks and it goes clear to the tree line back there. I'll split it in two, maybe do three tomorrow, and see if maybe if I make it smaller, they'll even beat down more. I just might have to move it in six hours versus eight. Or move them, I should say. But that's about how wide it'll be. So this is just a, a quick run over on what we're trying around here on the farm. And... Uh, if this is something that you would like to try on your farm or, or talk more about, leave a comment below. This is something we're really trying to work with here to boost our, our grass potential for the upcoming herds in the future. Um, we have a couple of fields that we're going to lime this year, but you know, the lime doesn't really help for a couple of years. Um, so getting the weeds beat down and the manure distributed evenly across the pasture is one of our main goals right now. So if you like this video, Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching JC's Organic Farming.